I got. Nice. Wow. You're on a metal sailor then. They, uh, somebody drew this, wow. and she brought it up. It's, it's like I was like, wow, that's pretty. Wow. <laughs> She'll probably be drawing something up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you? How's everybody doing? Good. 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 How's your convention so far? Uh, it's been a little while. But, you know, <laughs> I was on one set yesterday, and then and we shot through the night on another set. Oh, and, <laughs> And then I came here. Yes, I've been on the floor as they said. They go here, they go here, they turn here, and then land here. Yeah. So that's what we do. So since you're so crazy it's, and up thinking straight, you can tell all the secrets that you're going to Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's surely going to happen. <laughs> you don't understand, I have a shock collar on. It <laughs> uh, works really well. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Ghost Rider. Um, pretty ambitious to, to delve right into uh, an iconic character um, for this season um, after coming off the Inhumans arc in the last season. Um, what, what made you, you guys, go forward with this? Um, well, I, you know, from the very beginning of the pilot, uh, we stated that what S.H.I.E.L.D. does is it, it goes after the weird, it goes after the unusual, it goes after the dangerous, and it determines the, the best course of action for the safety of everybody around. And we started looking through the Marvel Encyclopedia and we went, weird, unusual, dangerous, <laughs> Ghost Rider, yes. Uh, and it, it helped that it took us in a, in a new direction, uh, some of the supernatural and, 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 and moving up to 10 o'clock. Uh, if we were going to do Ghost Rider right, there was going to be a certain level of, of uh, that's what we do, action, let's put it that way. That you know we might not have done at nine o'clock. ABC was incredibly supportive about it, uh, and then I, you know, I have to give credit where credit's due. It, you know, Jed Whedon and Rich Tancerone and, and uh, Jeff Bell, who are our showrunners, and co-creators, uh, and the writing staff did an extraordinary job of making the, the worlds fit seamlessly together. Uh, Gabriel Luna was, you know. Again, one of those finds that Marvel does that we're just incredibly happy that he's part of the family now. People seem to really like what he does. It's not just about being a giant flaming head. <laughs> uh, there's actually a, a very moving portrait of a character of Robbie Reyes uh, and his relationship with his brother. Uh, and so, you know, you put all those things together and they make S.H.I.E.L.D. So uh, that's the part that was super cool for us. And then a big shout out to Mark Kolpak, who's our VFX guy, uh, who I think is doing movie quality work uh, on a television budget, which is extraordinary to be able to do that. Um, a lot of people talk about, oh, like, you know, Shield moved to 10 p.m., it's a lot darker now, which like, it obviously is, but was it always your intention to once you get a certain um, a certain storyline or number of seasons to start going darker than the stories that no, you No, I mean, I, certainly, you know, it's funny because I, we've been on at 8, we've been on at 9, and now we're on at 10. Um, I said, eventually we'll either be on at 7 or 11. <laughs> uh, I think they're just going to try us at all different times. Um, I, I think what it really speaks to is, is the strength of the storytelling seems to be working and that the audience is, is staying with us, that they didn't abandon us at, at 10 o'clock, uh, which we were concerned about. Um, it, they haven't had the best luck in that time slot, uh, but apparently uh, this move has worked out really well. Uh, if, if those dang vice presidents hadn't <laughs> uh, decided to have a debate last week, we'd be on again. So uh, we're trying to be on as much as we can. It's one of the challenges of, of doing a serialized show is you have a super cool cliffhanger and then yeah, vice presidents talk to each other. <laughs> Good for them. What was the, uh, the process like on designing this ride? Uh, well, uh, Joe Casada, who's our chief creative officer, has a big hand in, in designing things. Uh, and we have uh, somebody who works specifically within the television division, uh, a young man by the name of Josh Shaw. Uh, and he does a series of drawings, and then it, it passes between Marvel New York and, and Marvel Television, and uh, and then eventually gets to the, the showrunners. Um, and then it goes to the, okay, well, that's a nice drawing. Now, how do we actually make this thing? Uh, and that's where uh, Mark Kolpak and Chris Cheremy, who is in charge of post for us, um, 
make it work. And uh, all I can tell you is it, it's not inexpensive. <laughs> uh, but we we seem to have managed to keep the show at the level that we always stayed at. We've always had, been a big FX show, uh, not at the expense of character or drama or humor. Uh, but adding a, a, a flaming head has certainly been a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but folks seem to like it. And, uh, they certainly had something to compare it to. Yeah. Uh, and so so I, I think we, we hit that same sort of lucky button that we hit when we told people we were going to make a Daredevil television show and they compared it to something else as well. So uh, that's kind of the thing I, I take a lot of pride in. Everybody in Marvel Television has been able to take these characters that up to a certain point hadn't really been connecting with the audience. And I'm sure they've connected with some of the audience, but not in the way that we seem to be kidding with people. And so, you know, whether it's Shield and Ghost Rider or it's Daredevil or it's Punisher, you know, it's one of the things that we really enjoy. I'm curious, is this a character, Ghost Rider, that's going to be in it for the long haul, or is this kind of just a this season kind of arc, or that is that would, not That even... would fall under the category of waiting to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the Inhumans? Like, you brought, like, we had a huge season last season with the Inhumans, and you might have thought bringing Ghost Rider would have put them to the back burner, but as we saw with the new director, that they're still around. <laughs> the, the, the Inhumans are, are an important part of, of what's going on, and, and really gives us a, a, a nice, easy jump on place for the audience to understand what it is that S.H.I.E.L.D. does. Because there's now the Sokovia Accords, it's, it's a very simple idea, which is they go, they find them, they register them. If they don't want to be registered, they get taken in. So it, it, it's by using the Inhumans and because the, the magic of, and I use magic in it, not in there, could be Bobby Boo way, but in the magic of the show, uh, is that at any moment, depending upon your interaction with the Terrigen crystals, uh, you know, any human can pop up. And so it, it gives story. And one of the things that Jeff Bell talks about all the time is there's no point in interesting a character that doesn't generate story. And so that's that's one of the things that we always look at, which is, okay, if we're going to do this, how does this affect not just the first episode or the third episode or the eighth episode, but all 22 episodes for the season? Uh, and, and with any kind of luck, because we've been very lucky with, with Sarah Finn, who also does the casting for all the movies, our casting has been pretty extraordinary on the show. So. Can I ask just one quick thing? <laughs> just curious, would Doctor Strange, will we see any kind of tie into that movie? Or let, let me just say that Strange 